Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to uh, thank you for the Sabbath and thank you for the opportunity where we can all gather together uh, again in fellowship. Uh, we look forward to these times where our churches can come together in unity. And we just pray, Lord, that you would bless us as uh, those of us who are already here. Uh, may your Holy Spirit uh, guide and bless and direct the lesson. And those who are on their way, Father, we pray that you would protect them uh, by retinue of holy angels and that you would prosper their journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, you're looking at that lesson study. And I'm going to ask, uh, come and take this mic. We're going to have two mics out there. And this is what I call, you keep both. We're going to keep one on one side, one on the other. But this is what I call a class of participation. <clears throat> I'm not here to dominate anything. I'm just here to facilitate as the mic is being passed and as you read uh, different scriptures and uh, join in in the study. So first of all, everybody has their Bibles? Yeah. Ooh, man, I only heard one amen. Today's the Sabbath. Let me try this one more time. Does everybody have their Bibles? Whether it's this type or this type. Let me see. I want to take a survey. How many have the electronic? Raise your, let me see. How many have the electronic Bibles on you right now? Or in your hands? How many have standard? Oh, okay. Very good. That's a good, good mix. All right. All right. We're going to go into our study and... What is the title that you see on your paper? What does it say? This is a new study. Those of you that, okay. This is a new study that we're just starting. It's God's kingdom of this world. And for those of you that are watching, on the very front, there's a picture. You don't have it. But some of us that have this study, on the front is a picture of Noah, okay? A picture of Noah, and he's talking, to, preaching to the people. And if you look at this picture very carefully, you will see that these people, they are mocking or not paying attention to what Noah is saying or preaching on here. But this morning, each one of you are not going to be like these people on here. Each one of you are going to be participating and be like Noah and his family, right? that are working, studying, and moving on. Now, I want to read the introductory note of God's kingdom in this world. And it says, The lesson as outlined for study should be considered simply as a framework. Let the text of the scriptures cited be read, studied, and as far as possible committed to memory. Next, get the logical connection of these texts, texts, clearly in mind. Then let the practical and the spiritual truth of each lesson, the coming of the promised seed to restore this world to its rightful king, become a part of our personal experience. We shall then pray from the heart, thy kingdom come. He will then see in us his seed. We shall then be fully translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of of his dear son. So are you guys, or all of us, are we in the kingdom of darkness? Are we? Are we trying to get out of the kingdom of darkness? What kingdom are you in? Oh, you think about that. Anyway, in lesson one, it talks about Adam as a sub-ruler in God's kingdom. So first of all, which kingdom is here? Which one is set? Which kingdom? God's kingdom. And now Adam is a what? A sub-ruler in the kingdom. What does that mean to be a sub-ruler in a kingdom? Are you a part of the kingdom? If you're a sub-ruler in the kingdom... Sub means below? I, you need a microphone because the people on the internet can't hear. 
So I need my mic rollers. Where's my micers? Are we rolling the mics? Where's the mic? He ran away with it. Help. Somebody, somebody go pick up the mics. Where's the other one? All right, go ahead. Pass someone wants to speak. We want to, we want to move on with that mic. And go get the other one so that uh, this is Sister Hall, Sister Taylor, excuse me. Uh, just looking at the word sub-ruler, knowing that sub means below, you know, you think submarine, sub-zero. So I would see God as the head, the head ruler in Adam coming just under God um, as a sub-ruler of this earthly kingdom. Okay. Let's look at our memory text. It says, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. So who is the king of all the earth? God is the king of all the earth, and Adam was a sub-ruler or a part of that kingdom. I want to read out of the New Study Bible, the King James Version of it, the introduction of Genesis, because we're going to spend our time in the book of Genesis. And in the book of Genesis, I just want to put a foundation here when it talks about the theme of Genesis. It says, every attentive student of Genesis is aware of the main theme of the book. First, the narration of God's dealing with the faithful few who loved and served him. And second, the depth of depravity into which those who had left God and his precepts fell. The book of Genesis is the first permanently recorded divine revelation accorded men. The book also has a doctrinal importance. Its record, the creation of this world, and all its living creatures, the entrance of sin, and God's promise of salvation. It teaches that man is a free moral agent, the possessor of a free will, and that the transgression of the law of God is the source of all human woe. It gives instruction concerning the observance of the holy Sabbath as a day of rest and worship, the sanctity of marriage, and the establishment of the home, the reward of, for obedience, and the punishment for sin. The book is written in an interesting style and appeals to the imagination of the young. Its elevated moral themes are food for mature, for the mature, and its teachings are instructive for all. This is the book of Genesis, whose study no Christian can afford to neglect, and whose shining heroes every child of God may imitate. Now, when you talk or read the book of Genesis, do you understand what it just says, that we would love to imitate what transpired in this book? What would you want to imitate that you learn from the book of Genesis? Does this appeal to the young? Do young kids like uh, the book of Genesis? Does it, does it teach them anything? Or does us as adults, does it teach us anything? What, just in the general perspective, what do you think? Anyone? What I've just read. If you raise your hand, you'll get the mic. It's coming. Where is he? Well, the book of Genesis, like many other books in the Bible, teaches us great truths. For example, um, I have some young nieces and nephews. They learn the creation story. They learn about Abraham, Joseph, all those stories that have a life teaching object lessons. So the book of Genesis appeals to both young, old, etc. While you have that mic right with you, let me ask a, a question. Did, did we as a people learn anything from the book of Genesis, the story? Of course, yeah. Well, Genesis 3.15 uh, begins the story of the salvation, and the gospel story. Okay. All right, let's turn our Bibles now to Genesis 1.26. And I'm going to ask somebody to read the first question. I'm not going to be the only one talking here. I want to, we're going to pass the mic around. We're going to have those involved. So uh, you can give the mic to anyone you choose, because I want them to read the question and also to read the text, which will be the answer, and then we will go into that. So anyone, you want to pass the mic around? Somebody want to read that text? 
And the question first. To whom and how fully was the dominion of this earth given? Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, she read that text and there's a word in that text. The word is dominion. Oh. What does that sum up, the word dominion? What does that mean? In one word, what do you think dominion means? We're, we're, yes? Over here to the right? As uh, me and my family were studying this last night, dominion is rulership over. So in the beginning, Adam had complete um, rulership over the entire earth. But we know as a result of sin, that was forfeited. We know that Christ was the one that redeemed us or brought, bought us back. So Christ rightfully has dominion over the earth. Okay. Um, well, I just want to stop for a second. Are you going to do with the young people that you said you were going to do? Sister, Venture? No? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, you heard what the word was where he said that it was ruled, that Christ had dominion, and also who was the sub-ruler? Adam, okay. So dominion was given over to Adam, right, over the earth. Now, I want to read something to you that is in the study Bible. And no, yeah, in the study Bible, and it talks about a larger family. And I want someone to look up this text, Ephesians 3.15. And while you're looking that up, I'm going to read this to you. It says, infinite love, how great it is. God made the world to enlarge heaven. He desires a larger family of created intelligences. Now, somebody read Ephesians 3, 15. Ephesians 3, 15. Anybody has it? We have two mics. Are they being passed around? Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Okay, so the whole family is who? Who's the whole family? Does God have a whole family? Boy, you guys are quiet this morning. Is this building changing? You can speak. Don't be tired out. Does God have a whole family? Yes? Are you a part of that family? Yes, God wanted to make the family larger because of what? To fill what? To fill what? The earth, but also to fill where else? To fill the void in heaven, okay? So, but in the very beginning, you, you have to understand that God is love, but God likes people, right? Now, there were other worlds but he created this one special, right? So are you special? Okay, only one person said, yes, we are. Are you special? Why are you special? What makes you different than all the other worlds? Why are you special? Anyone, why are you special? I see two guys with their hands, but I want to see a female answer this one. Come on, ladies, talk to me. Why are you special? No, hold on. I want, I, want a, I want a lady to answer this one. Why are you special? This one, or the mic over here on this side. Um, we are special because Christ died for us on the cross. 
And what else? And he gave his, um, he gave us um, the opportunity to, to overcome sin like he did. Okay. Anyone, anyone else has something to say? Over here, go ahead. And I think of special, it always brings me to that text that speaks, um, says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So being that we have been chosen by God and that he calls us royalty, that we can be priests, you know, as part of his kingdom to share his everlasting gospel. Okay. Now, it's interesting you said that because further on in the study, that text comes up to me that we are a royal priesthood and that we are special. Um, when we talk about being special, are there some guidelines to being special or is it anybody can do it or only certain people can do it? I can't hear you, the microphone. God is no respecter of persons. And? That means that anybody can be adopted into the family of Christ. But also, would that mean that they would have to choose to be a part of it? Yeah, there's a part we have to play. Okay. Yes, definitely. All right. All right. So now, in question number one, we're going to go to question number two. And now when we look at question number two, somebody put your hand up to read question number two and to read Genesis 1. 28. The question reads, what commission was given to Adam and Eve? How much of the earth were they to subdue? So Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 reads, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So what was the very first thing that God did? What did he do for them? He blessed them, okay? Is he, when you follow God or you follow Christ, are you to be blessed? If you do not follow God or follow Christ, are you blessed? Are you blessed? I can't hear you, the microphone. God is loving and he blesses us whether we follow him or not. We get blessings every day. Okay. Everyone agrees with that? Comment? Um, a lot of times when we read this, most of the time, I believe personally, we, we, we think that this verse uh, as to say, making tons of babies. And it, it could have something to do at the same time with planting not only physical food, but spiritual food as well, spreading, spreading the, the gospel of Christ. That's the comment I wanted to make. <laughs> why, do you, why do you feel that that, that, that also is included in that, in that context? Um, well, let's read it again. I studied this uh, like three in the morning uh, this morning, so. It's coming. Pardon uh, me? Yeah. yeah. So it says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish. Wait, maybe, let's see here. Uh, yes, we're on, okay, here. You're right, go ahead. Yes, okay. So yes, and God blessed them, 
And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, etc., etc. Well, the reason why uh, I came to that thought is because it, 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 it says here, replenish the earth. Now, in the earth we plant. We plant food, but also we plant physical food, and at the same time, he wants us to replenish the earth with his word, with his gospel. He wants us to take the gospel around the world. Now, let me just point out something to you real carefully. If you look at the... I mean, starts, I could be wrong, but... No, no listen. <laughs> you can see here that everything is being started, okay? It's just two people that are there, okay? Or Adam and Eve, or Adam, and then also all these creatures. So God now, he wants to replenish the earth. He's starting something, so from there it's going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and become more because he wants man to subdue the animals, the fowls, and then also replenish the earth with also its kind, right? Am I right? Okay. Now, I want to read this out of the, the uh, study Bible. It says, man, a new and distinct order. It says, all heaven took a deep and joyful interest in the creation of the world and of man. Okay? Human beings were a new and distinct order. Did you catch that? Human beings now are new and a distinct order. They were made in the image of God, and it was the Creator's design that they should populate the earth. So it was the Creator's design for what He has done for the earth to be repopulated. Very good. Now, what is this, and I think what you're talking about now, when you talk about the image of God, how does this come into play? What is the image of God? How do you, how do you describe or how do you think of the image of God? Anyone? Or put it to you this way, does God have an image that he displays? Well, you're shaking your head. I need a microphone with a person shaking their head. Who's shaking their head? Come on, talk to me. Someone raise a hand. Anyone else? For a mic. What do you think? Anyone? Why do you say yes? Who said yes? Well, go ahead. A microphone? Someone quickly? Anyone else? Image. The image of God. Why? Who do you think of the image of God? You think that you're a part of the image of God? Are you the image of God? What was the question now? Are you a part of the image of God? It's the image of God. Are okay. you a part of the image of God? Well, we all hope to be striving to be in the image of God. What is his image? God's need, image a mic is up in here. This, no, the, yeah, I the, want to say it out. No, say it out. His character. His character. Okay. And what, what is his... Bring the mic up here. I wanted to say something because she she hit she hit on something here. Thank you. Go ahead. She said his character, and go ahead. Expound a little bit on his character. Why you said his character? Um, I think about mic to the mouth. So everyone can hear you. I think about when Moses asked God, Lord, I want to see who you are. Show me your glory, and He said, I'll make my self to shine upon you, and then He revealed Himself through His character and described who he was through his character. Okay, so it's the character then. Okay, the image is the character. What character do we display today in 2016? Over here to the side, another mic. Stay there, uh, he has on that side, over here. He'll do that side. Over here. Um, dealing with the image of God, if we turn to the book of uh, Genesis chapter one and verse 27, I have a couple of texts to share. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. 
in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So I, I agree with what the sister was saying. Part of it is definitely character. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 5, in Genesis chapter 5, in verse uh, number 3, it says, and Adam lived 130 years and begat his son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now, was that before sin or was that after sin? After. We know that was after sin. So there was a difference between what had happened in Genesis chapter 1 and what had happened in Genesis chapter 5. So I, I do agree with what my sister um, had previously said part of that was definitely character but not just form but character as well amen anyone else all right let us look now at question number three someone read question number three and we're going to look at genesis 2 8. someone read question number three raise your hand to read that question anyone anyone can read What object lesson did the Lord give them of what he designed the whole earth should become? We're going to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and reading in verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Okay, so what, did, what, what was the lesson now that the Lord was giving uh, this object lesson, what was he designing on the earth now? What did, what did God do for Adam? What was going on here? What did he do? What did he just read? What was created? A what? I can't hear. Someone needs a mic. Don't mumble it. Say it out loud. Who is it? Someone come up with a mic to someone, anyone? Anyone else? Anyone tell someone else want to tell me? Why oh, we got a bunch of shy people today? Come, sister. All right. He planted a garden. Okay, why did he plant a garden? Why did God put a garden there? What was the purpose of that? Go ahead, speak. Go so ahead. that man could work the garden. Okay, so that man could work the garden. And um, just to learn how things grew, it was a uh, object lesson for them. So it was an object lesson for them. Do you think then that what God did here on the earth, is there any likeness anywhere else that there could be something that he's had a pattern or something that he made to show. What do you think? Anyone? Go ahead, Mike. Yes. Um, I'm going to read from uh, Revelation 22, 12, 13, and 14. If you can follow. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So this um, tree, um, it, was, it was like a symbol and of um, the two trees. It was a symbol of the two decalogues, the two, command, the two tables okay, of stone. You, 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 the two trees. The the what of now? the tree of life and uh, the knowledge of Okay, garden. so that is what now? You're talking about the garden? You, you have to In the garden, yeah. It okay, so the those trees yes. are in the garden. Yes. Okay, we're coming to that. Okay. But go ahead. And um, it, it says that blessed are they that do his commandments. And um, you can see that in Patriots and Prophets, God said that when um, he warned them, you know, about the serpent and all this stuff, that how he fell and everything. 
Okay, you're jumping ahead. Yeah, but let me just say about... <laughs> We're coming. It's in the lesson, but go ahead. Okay. The, the no, let her speak. Let her speak. The trees were in the garden, in other words. So it was, it was a place for there for a reason, for them that's, to obey. It. That's right. But now, here we have the garden. We have the Garden of Eden. We have Adam in there. I want someone to read. You read for me Genesis 2.15. Okay. okay. And, and Sister Arsenal over here on the other side really was telling um, why man was, was in that garden, but now we're going to put him in that garden now sure. through Scripture. 2 Genesis 2.15, what does it say and there? And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay, so what does that mean now when we say dress it and to keep it? To like maintain it, to work on it. So this must have been a, a very beautiful and a nice garden. Yes. So let me, get, let me get this straight then. Man was put here on this earth just to just sit around and, and just kick back and enjoy life, or God gave him something to, to do? work. Huh? To work. To work. All right. Well, let me ask everybody this question. We're going to have a problem or an issue with people that don't follow what God has said in the very beginning, and that was man was to labor. Am I correct? Man was to do what? To work. Now, if us ladies here or something, if you see a man that doesn't do that, what do you think? Is he following the blueprint? Sister Dista, you're shaking your head like, is he following the blueprint? So ladies, you're to be careful of what? Oh, don't laugh. Here it is from the very beginning. God put man in the Garden of Eden. He was to labor. He was to keep it up. He was to dress it, keep it beautiful. What would happen if he didn't do anything? It would look like what? What would it look like? What happens to your gardens here if you don't do anything? They look what? It looked dead or it looks terrible, right? Okay. All I'd right. like to read a quote real quick in the study Bible on yes. Genesis 2.15. Yeah, it was, says that Eden is heaven in miniature. It says specifically Adam had themes for contemplation in the works of God in Eden, which was heaven in miniature. God did not form man merely to contemplate his glorious works. Therefore, he gave him hands for labor as well as a mind and heart for contemplation. If the happiness of man consisted in doing nothing, the creator would not have given Adam his appointed work. Man was to find happiness in labor as well as in meditation. Okay, so he was there, a hand behind you? Yes. I was thinking about what you were saying about um, how they were supposed to take care of the, um, the garden. And in um, 2 Thess Thessalonians 3.11, you know how it says, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. So if they didn't take care of the garden, so how were they able to, you know, to eat of it, you know, to whip the food of it? Like you said, if you let it go bad, then what happens to it? Then you won't get anything. That's right. That's right. So everything incorporates works one with another. And very good. And that was the next thing that I was going to read was what, she, what, what Denise read uh, from the, the study Bible. Let's move on to question number four. And in question number four, it states, what did the Lord cause to grow in this garden? And this is Genesis 2.9. And dear Sister Ventura had brought that up, some of the big major things that was in, in that garden, okay, that was placed there. So now let us look at Genesis 2.9. I need a reader for Genesis 2 verse 9. Someone put their hand up, read the Bible, Genesis 2, 9. Anyone? Sister, over here. Genesis 2, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so here in the, in the garden was what? Beautiful trees, right? 
They said what we have today is nothing compared to what was in that garden, those trees, and the fruit that came thereof. But two other things were placed in that garden. What two things were placed? Sister Ventura, what was that that you said? Yeah, those two trees. Give him the mic, yes. Wanted to go. He has it there. Two trees were placed. The, the tree of uh, life and the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, now, why were those, what was the tree of life? What does that mean? Tree of life. I can't hear you. I'm, I'm deaf up here. I need a microphone. Look, Mike. My mic guy is at the door. He's everywhere. Come, Mike. Let her handle the door. You handle the mic. She'll, she'll handle it. Come on. Over here. Over here. Here we go. Say that again. The tree of life was um, immortality. Speaking to the mic, because I want everybody to hear you. The, the tree, tree of, of life is? Immortality. Immortality. Immortality of how? What, what was this tree? What does it do? I mean, where did it come from? Who does it represent? What? It represents, uh, represents um, God. Who's life? That's right. God is life. So who does it represent? It represents it God. It represents God. Now, if you partake of this tree, what will happen? You live forever and you'd be with him. And Whatever partakes of this tree will live forever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what was the other tree? Which one? Is this the tree that everybody likes? The tree of what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Does everyone likes this tree? What is it? Uh, people cannot hear. Say, yes, go ahead. Nowadays, everybody does, because we have a choice. You know, the same choice that was in the garden is the exact same choice. That is? That is now. That is so, now. So, you know, we can choose to get into spiritualism and all kind of crazy stuff but every time people get into that type of stuff they're chew they're actually eating the fruit from that tree but we also have the tree of life which is uh, God's word so we have a choice to do what God asks us to do or we have a choice to do what comes natural to the carnal heart I'm going to read something real quickly um, out of Revelation 22 of the Study Bible. Let's see if I find that. Yes. In um, the Study Bible, Revelation 22, verse 2, I think um, Denise had said, mentioned that before another part, but here it says, The tree of life is a representation of the preserving care of of Christ for his children. As Adam and Eve ate of this tree, they acknowledged their dependence upon God. The tree of life possessed the power of, to perpetual life, and as long as they ate of it, they could not die. The lives of the antediluvians were protracted because of the life-giving power of this tree, which was transmitted to them from Adam and Eve. Do you see how powerful this tree was? That it had power to go all the way through, even to the antediluvians. This is why people lived, for how many years of age were they living in those days? 900 and what? 800, 900 years. But through sin it decreased thereafter. But all the way through to the antediluvians. Now, um, in Genesis um, Let's look at number five. We're going to go into number five. Number five says, by obedience to what command was man to acknowledge that God was the supreme ruler of the world? Somebody read Genesis 2, 16, and 17. It says, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So the command was that they were not to touch that tree. And it's interesting sometimes when you talk to um, people of, of other faiths, 
they say that the law has been done away with, hmm. but if God would do away with his law, then why did he kick Adam and Eve out of the garden for eating a fruit? You see what I'm saying? So we understand that obedience to his law, and his law is basically whatever he says, that's how we obtain the blessings of God is through obedience. But today, in 2016, we as Christians following Christ, we have a problem with obedience, do we? Yes, we do. Why do we have this problem with obedience? We've sit here and looked in the Bible, see from beginning to end, we know everything because it's placed right here, but we, and I said we because it's me and all of us, have a problem with obedience. Why is this? Somebody talk to me about this. Come on. Yes. Why do we have a problem with obedience? Okay, I hope I'm in the right question. <laughs> um, I think because um, it's, I, I, I see it as a test too. Ah. And, and in Isaiah 48, 3, it says that God um, declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth and showed him, and did eat suddenly, and them suddenly, and they came to pass. So he's, right now, we are in the last days, but he's declaring things since the beginning. Since the beginning, God required for the first parents' obedience. And now we have the same test. He requires for us to follow, you know, what he says out of his mouth. So he's declaring. Can I stop you for a second? Yes. Because you said one key word. You said a test. How do we, how do we prepare for a test? Well, you study. Okay, so we study the Bible. Yes. And that prepares us for the test. Yes. We're ha actually having an open book test. Yes. We really do know the answers. Mm -hmm. But when we come time to take the test, we fail. Yes. Is everybody with me? Oh, come on, a mic over here. Where's my mic, people? On the left. Mike, right here. Sister Howard has a hand. Mike, right here. Oh, I didn't. See. Right here. Right in the front. There we go. I think the problem that we have today, and it's exactly what happened to Eve, she knew clearly that God told her not to eat of that fruit, but Eve followed herself. And I think most, not think, I know, the reason why we're not obedient today is because self gets in the way. Okay, so we're a bunch of selfish, oh, come on, the mic is flying here. Right over here, Sister Distant. Sister Distant, hands are flying here. Yes, ma'am. And I agree with that. And just to add to that, um, it is self that's the problem, and I think specifically the love of self. Because um, the Bible says in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it's really a test of our love for God. And if, if we have a problem with obe obeying Christ, then we have to question, do we really love God? Do we really love Jesus? So then you're saying now we have measured love for God, because we don't love him 100%. We just pick and choose whatever we like to, to love him for, but we're fully not. Is that true, people? Do we just have a part-time love with God, is, is, or is it full-time? Somebody, Mike, Mike over here, right there, and hold the mic over there. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Even as we think about um, of God placing them and giving them a command that they should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, um, again, that, that is a test um, for us. Also, as I think about that, um, to, have, to have doubt in the mind and also to have belief or unbelief. Now, do we believe God at his word? Or do we doubt his word? Are we going to obey or are we going to disobey what God has spoken? And so those seeds of doubt and unbelief is what we have to consider. Do we have those seeds within our heart? Yes. Um, I was going to say something that I read in um, our high calling. It's called the title, No Patchwork Religion. And I think the reason also is because um, what this, um, in Matthew 24, 13, it says, but he that shall endure the test 
unto the end the same shall be saved. And let me read, um, it says, the religion of self composed of threads that fade and give way under the stress of temptation must be cast aside to be replaced by the religion woven by him in whose life no selfishness was found place. Christ's plane is the only safe one. He declares, behold, I make all things new. In uh, Revelation 21, 5. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The Savior gives no encouragement to any to think that he will accept a patchwork religion. Such a religion is of no value in his sight. There may, there may be at first seem to be some self and some of Christ, but it's soon seen that there is none of Christ. The patches of selfishness increases till the entire garment is covered with them. And I think that happened to Eve. Um, you know, while she was going through this test, hmm. and let me finish the last um, sentence or paragraph. A religion formed after the divine pattern is the only one that will endure. Only by striving to live the life of Christ here can we prepare ourselves to live with him through the eternal ages. Now I want to add to that, I'm looking out of the study um, part of the, the Bible here, and it talks about to repopulate heaven after this test. It says, God created man for his own glory that after the test and the trial of the human family might become one with the heavenly family. It was God's purpose to repopulate heaven with the human family if they would show themselves obedient to his every word. Adam was to be tested to see whether he would be obedient as the loyal angels or disobedient. Let me ask you this. Do you think it was fair that God did this to test Adam? I want to hear a strong opinion about that. Do you think it was fair that God did this to test Adam? Did he have to test Adam? Some people are going like this. Some people are going like this. Should he have tested Adam, yes or no? I want to hear a rousing yes or no. Should he have uh, tested Adam? Yes. Um, the t God gave the test because he wanted to see if, if Adam and Eve would be obedient fully to his word. And so, you know, as you think about this test, um, we think about it, it takes me back to um, there was a war in, in heaven. Now there was an angel was cast out of heaven, Lucifer, who was falling, and, and angels that he also uh, deceived and got to, um, to also follow him. But because of there was a void in heaven, God now has a space in heaven that he wants to again replace with unfallen. Uh, so now I think the test was definitely necessary for humanity. Okay, now, it said, if he stood the test, his instruction to his children would have been only of loyalty. His mind and thoughts would have been as the mind and thoughts of God. He would have been taught by God his husbandry and building. His character would have been molded in the accordance with the character of God. So, if he had passed the test, he would have been this. He would, but the key word is loyalty. Who do we really have loyalty to here in this earth? Are we 50-50, half to, half to Lucifer and half to God? What's the problem with 100% loyalty? If somebody looks at you and pull you up like this and they say, let me see what your contents is inside. What is it supposed to say? 100% loyalty to who? But it's tainted. Something's wrong here. I'm not getting this true product. 100% to God. God is coming soon. And he's looking for those that have his character and has that label on there 100%. But because we do not what? Somebody said a key word over here. S-E-L-F. What is the problem? Why are we so selfish? Why? Why? Who taught you that? Let me read this. It says here, seeds of death, Satan's work. It says, Christ never planted the seeds of death 
in the system. And Brother Cargo mentioned uh, a little bit of this says, Satan planted these seeds when he tempted Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge, which meant disobedience to God. Seeds of death? Are we suffering from now the seeds of death? Who started the seeds of death? Who started it? Can you imagine where he was? Here's the throne, here's Christ, and here's Lucifer. How do you start seeds of death and you're right in the presence of the Almighty? Iniquity came into his heart. I want to be like him. I want to be worshipped. I want to be the Most High. What's that word there? What's the word? I, I, I. What's in the middle of sin? The letter what? I. And that word I develops into self. The true Christians that we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be the loving ones from the seed of Adam. We're supposed to be the ones that go and tell everybody the truth of what is really going on here in this earth. Don't get caught up in the foolishness of this little box here. This is the new box now. Forget television, that ain't nothing. This is it. This thing right here, all the foolishness that comes in this thing, it can either be for good or it can either be for evil. It depends on what we use this for, to spread the word of God and to tell others about his soon coming. Every last one of us here in this room, that is our mission. Everyone that's watching on the internet, that is our mission, to tell about Jesus and his soon coming. This lesson here is telling us where it all started. This is a lesson telling us how it all started and moving through all the way from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. But one day, if we're faithful and true, we're going to see Adam and Eve. I can't wait. But... Do you really want to see Adam and Eve? Do you really want to see Christ? It's all up to each one of us here in this room what we truly want. I say to all of us and myself, stop being selfish. Smile. Show that you're a Christian. If I saw you on the street, I'd say, huh, who's that? That person got the meanest face God loves you. Let him know. Show the truth. Tell him the truth. Now, those of you that are in our church, make sure that you get this lesson study. Those of you that are on the internet, you can request this lesson study. Those of you that have the copies today, make sure you take it home and finish your study. Next week, of course, we will finish our study with, with that lesson. But we are all God's children. Amen? Act like it. Act like it. I'll tell you what, today's a test. Let's see how we pass the test with one another. Amen? Everybody in this room should know who everybody is before you leave. Don't walk out of here and say, I, who's that? I don't know who that person is. Be like the angels in heaven. They all know each other, and there are billions of them. Can we do that today? Amen. I don't hear you. Can we do that today? Amen. One more time. Can we do that today? Amen. 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 So when I walk up to you, make sure they have that smile on your face and say, what is today? The blessed Sabbath day? Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to close with a word of prayer. And let us kneel. Those of us that can kneel and those that cannot, that's fine. But let us kneel as we close out. Our kind Father and God, we are so thankful for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon each and every one of us. But Lord, in the learning of this lesson today, we want to be the ones that carry the torch for what Christ has done here and be an example. We want to have his character, dear Father, so that when you come that you will see that character in us. But Lord, let us not be selfish. Let us not hold 
only to ourselves because that's not the true character of what you did. When you were here on this earth, you went to everywhere you possibly could go, healing and telling people about your Father in heaven. Lord, let that be the quest for each one of us here in this room, that we do go about our Father's business with love and loyalty and truly be obedient to him. This I pray in the loving name of your Son, Jesus Christ.